You're listening to PodcastJuice.net. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to PodcastJuice.net. My name is Michael Dean, and you're listening to The Prince Podcast. I've got a special show for you today. I've been calling this show in my mind, The Young Guns, but then I thought about, I don't know if I want to put guns in there. So we're going to say this is the, the, the real new power fans, new, new power generation, some, some new blood, some different perspective. Joining me today is a guy you may have seen online. I'm sure you have if you listen to this show. We have Mr. Jesse Jenkins. How are you? <laughs> What's up, you guys? Man, it's, it's, it's a pleasure having you on. I've been wanting to connect with you for a while, uh, so it's good to have you on here. For those who do or don't know, uh, Jesse has a YouTube channel. Uh, where he does a lot of great reviews and commentary uh, about Prince and the albums. That's how I came across him. Uh, so we'll get into that, but definitely check that stuff out. Also, we have Mr. Brandon on the show, and he's been on the show before. But Brandon, how you doing, sir? I'm doing good, Mike, uh, and the rest of the guys on this panel. Um, just it's always an honor to be on this show. So thank you for having me. Oh man, for sure. Thank you for coming on. Uh, again, another uh, YouTube channel that we have to check out. We'll, we'll get the names, everything, but a great commentary on music uh, and also with the great uh, commentary on Prince activities as well. So we'll get into that. And then last but certainly not least, we have uh, Crystal, who has been on this show before. Uh, Crystal, in my opinion, for me uh, as a person doing this show, this is somebody who, from the gate, has supported Podcast Juice. We got some little audio thing going there. But has supported Podcast Juice from the jump. Uh, it's always putting in, has his contribute uh, to making sure this thing is running. So I'm always going to pull her into uh, any opportunities <laughs> I can to have around here. So, Crystal, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. It's nice to be on again. I kind of miss being on here, so I'm ready to talk some prints. Right on, right on. All right, so uh, <laughs> let's get things going. Uh, first, I wanted to do is ask how you guys got into prints. So, you know, one of the points of doing this show today is I wanted to get some different perspective from, let's say, younger fans' viewpoint of how they got into prints. You know, a lot of us, or at least for me, you know, I will say, um, you know, Purple Rain was sort of the thing that set it off uh, for me. Mm -hmm. I had heard of Prince before, and you kind of saw him bubbling a little bit, but, you know, wasn't super aware of who he was and certainly wasn't all into it. And then, you know, Purple Rain comes out, you know, shocks the world, and all of a sudden, whoa, this guy is, what what is this, you know? And you go go back (laughs) Mm -hmm. and listen to the to uh, a few of the older albums at that point, and you're like, Mm -hmm. oh, that was... Oh, you know what I mean, and so then, and then from there, you know, he's just busting your head every year with something new <laughs> that you know you can't yeah. even explain. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, I have come across fans who weren't around during those times, and you know, I come across people who are like, "Yeah, when I heard Diamonds and Pearls, or you know, Thirty One Twenty One, I was oh, mm-hmm. I was enamored, you know, and I went back and." And did it. So I want to get that kind of perspective. I think it's interesting, particularly going forward, you know, where Prince is uh, headed. You know, you sort of have almost sometimes you have two camps of fans. You got those who are just beholden to the uh-huh. 80s, and I may have a foot in that, you know. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, it don't sound like that. And then, <laughs> and then you have, you know, other, it's like, yo, I, I appreciate both sides, and the guy grows, and this is mm-hmm. that. So. I wanted to get into that. I'm going to start running my mouth. So I'm going to start with uh, Jesse. I'm going to start with you. Uh, um, how did okay. you, so let me ask you a question. All right. Uh, when did you first hear of Prince? And then, and then <clears throat> excuse me, when did you go all in and dive deep into uh, Prince? <laughs> um, Prince was not pr- played at our house because I came from a really Christian kind of home. And my dad and everyone knew about him, but he was never really on. So I would say uh, the first time was really accidentally while looking for <laughs> this sounds crazy, but I was listening to I, was, I think I was downloading LimeWire and I wanted to listen to some Fred Hammond song and a door came on instead. Interesting. And oh. I was like, who is this? And it sounded really good. And then I looked up Prince and the Black Album came up and I heard when two are in love. But it wasn't I would say the first full album uh, was really um, the Black Album. Uh, really? That's when I really got it. Yeah. 
Okay. So so that's the first time you heard. What was the thing that you said, okay, this guy Tw- is, is a guy? Uh, the first 2010, I heard that someone put the whole review. They reviewed the, the 2010 album, mm-hmm. and they had at the time the songs on it <laughs> before he removed it all. And I heard beginning endlessly, and that was like, whoa, that was it. Getting in the sleep. Wow. So let me get this straight because a lot of people be have they, they have something to say about twenty ten. <laughs> I know. And, and I, I know. think the album is dope. <laughs> the album is dope to yeah. me. But so beginning in the sleep on the album twenty ten, that was the trigger point where you just said you that know was what? like <laughs> <laughs> That's that's tight, man. Yeah, uh, the title and everything, because it's been literally like I've been beginning endlessly, but it's that song, I heard it, I I, I couldn't just the sounds, I, I've never heard anything like that for some reason I, at that point in my life, especially coming into my musical understanding. Mm-hmm. It was, it was, yeah, that was it. <laughs> Again, <laughs> Again, okay. okay. Um, and so that, yeah, that's 2010. That's only a few years ago. Uh, well, yeah. let me ask you this, if you don't mind. How old are you? I'm 23. 23. All right. I wish yeah. I could go back to 20. <laughs> if I had the, the mindset of today and go back to 23. But, um, so 2010, beginning in the sleep, what was the uh, first album after that that you got into of Prince's? See, at the time, I didn't know he was that way about music because I couldn't understand why I couldn't find it anywhere, you know. So mm-hmm. I was like, I don't I want to listen to him, but I, I, where can I find him? You know, and I, I didn't definitely want to just download music. So I had friends luckily enough to, to send it to me. And a friend started me off with uh, Sign of the Times. I heard that. And then after that, it was like it just I don't know how it came afterwards, but somewhere or another, I was just getting it. I was I was online all the time looking for new prints. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so. So, yeah, it, it, it just came out uh, of so many channels. I'm, I'm curious because I excuse me. I've seen some I've seen all your videos. I've seen the videos where you review and talk about albums. And you mentioned that uh, you guys signed the Times. It's not like someone sent it to you. Uh, what was the first Prince album that you bought? That I bought? Yeah. Uh, the first Prince album that I purchased out of my own money was like, okay, I can spend $20 on this cat off of Amazon. I want to say mm, the first album I bought. Because I bought so many. Uh, like where you physically had something. You know, Lotus Flower, Lotus Flower, okay. the three three D CD set. It was at Target for a dollar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I couldn't understand how the th- three CDs were so cheap. But that was the first. Yeah, that was like in two thousand and late, early, early two thousand eleven, and I got Lotus Flower, the three CD package. Yeah. Okay. Wow. All right. Well, we're gonna come. We're, we're gonna come back to that. That's uh, that's very interesting. It's, it says a lot. Um, you talked about it's sort of hard to find some of the music and you know, we always had discussions yeah. about, you know, tr- being able to get uh, access to his stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, cool. Uh, Brandon. Well, um, my perspective comes all the way back to the 90s. So okay. I okay. was, <laughs> ooh, I was like three or four years old and I remember my family was sitting in the living room of our old house Mm-hmm. And we used to have this um, this TV set that used to sit on the floor, those old TV sets. <laughs> and there was a VHS player on top of it. Oh, it was wow. like a, f- it wasn't the front loading one where you put the, the yeah, videotape yeah. <laughs> in it. You had to actually press the button and the thing would, f- you know, come up. The eject up. button. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. eject <laughs> button. And it'll come up <laughs> and you put the videotape in. Wow. So I came in the room. Real quick, I, how old were you during this period? I was like three or four. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, okay. I come in the room and I'm saying, what is this? It's like this man sweating on stage, no shirt on, <laughs> got a, a blinder, some over his eyes. And I'm like, this, uh, oh. this is crazy. Like, this is really, I had never seen anything like it before. Was and this the Purple Rain? The Purple Rain movie. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so um, that was basically my introduction to it. I remember looking at it and I was like, wow. And of course, you know, parents would, would tell me, well, you really can't watch this, but I would sneak in and I would watch it anyway. I, I you know, I still have that VHS. 
as was that computer blue you saw computer blue it was a computer blue performance and oh, i also that was see at that age. I used to watch a lot of it, <laughs> darling nikki right after oh, that. So it was, oh, i was like that was my my first exposure to mm-hmm. really the musician you know what i saw as the visual right so right. I was like, wow. And then after that, um, I remember watching MTV. We used to have cable. So we used to watch like MTV. And they used to have these little specials on. And they did a special around the, was it the Gold Experience era? Mm-hmm. I believe it was. It was around the era, era of the Gold Experience when he um, came out with The Most Beautiful Girl in the World. I remember mm-hmm. that video. It was a big deal. Um, then it was wow. the Black Album. They used to have like ads. Um, mm-hmm. went on there and I remember that ad and then I remember this one uh, specific time on Entertainment Tonight actually when they were talking about um, Prince changing his name mm-hmm. and uh, I was like yeah. that was crazy so that was like <laughs> that whole period you know Purple Rain onto what the media and all of that other stuff that was like my first intro so I'm like caught into the early 90s I was like 3 or 4 years old so that was right. just me I didn't even know who Prince was and of course after that Michael Jackson and all these other uh-huh. artists mm-hmm. uh, Sly and the Family Stone Stevie Wonder so I was Prince was kind of like my entry to music mm, for me too yeah in a lot of ways he was too what, sense, what, yeah. uh, what album or song or whatever what is it was there something that you heard at a certain point where you stopped and said, okay, let me really get into this guy? Um, well, the first album that I remember hearing was the hits. Um, okay. There was a, oh. a, I think it was the hits and the B-sides. And my cousin had like the cassette tape um, and she would play it all the time. And I just remember hearing this one song called um, Raspberry Beret. Yeah. And that really blew my mind i didn't even know what album it came from where <laughs> i mean but it was it just blew my mind to who he was i didn't even know that was the same man who was in purple rain mm-hmm. you know so all this time i was like well this is him this is prince so i was like wow and then um i think the first album that i remember buying with my own money I remember the day, it was the day after Thanksgiving. It was 2000, 2001. And I remember I was uh, with my uncle to buy some Christmas gifts on Black Friday. And I went to Circus City. This is when Circus City Circus. was. Yeah, oh, Circus City. Circus City. <laughs> yeah, they, <All> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they used to have these bargains, right? So they used to have everything marked off and everything. Mm-hmm. And I came across an album called Sign of the Times. <laughs> and I didn't even I, I read about it in books because I have like a whole history with Prince, but I'm gonna sum it up. I um I came across the album. And I was like, wow, that's Sign of the Times because I saw it in a picture on in a book, and I was like, oh, I gotta pick this up. And it was like I think twelve ninety nine. I was like, yeah, I gotta get this because I had the money, and I went on and brought it. The night I brought it home. I think it was that song, The Ballad of Dorothy Parker. Mm -hmm. And I had to have rewind it like, shit, like 20 times. (laughs) You sound like me. I was like, (laughs) yeah, you bet. I I was like, this is unreal. Like, this is really (laughs) Prince. So it was, I have like a whole history with Prince that I, you know, but that was really what set it off for me. I, um, I, you know, that was, that was my intro. All right. All right. All right, Crystal. So same all questions. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, first of all, I'm like I'm 31, so I was born in '84 when Purple Rain was oh, wow. just coming oh, wow. out. So okay. I really didn't even know what was going on until maybe like '89, '90. I was maybe like five, six years old, and I have an uncle of mine that is the biggest Prince fan. Mm-hmm. And he just he would just kind of just drill into our minds. Oh, Prince is bad. Prince is this. Prince is that. And <laughs> at that time, I wasn't really trying to hear it because I grew up listening to Michael Jackson. Ah, yeah. So We're it was get kind of Michael a little bit later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. um, you know, I just I just grew up. You know, we had that Moonwalker video and just played that out, and that's all that we really listened to. And then. You know, I didn't really hear Prince much in my house, not because of the Michael Jackson thing, but my dad, he 
was always playing James Brown and George Clinton, like Parliament, yeah. <laughs> all that. So, you know, all that stuff, you know, that I learned, you know, Prince kind of, you know, took, not took from that, but just was influenced by that stuff anyway. So, mm-hmm. you know, I learned that later on. But um, it's just funny because, you know, for the longest time, I... I could not get past the visual of Prince. I thought he just, he looked so weird to me. And <laughs> I didn't, ta- I couldn't take him seriously. And it's like, I I really had the hardest time getting past the visual. Like, I just remember what the, that, uh, that yellow outfit with, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was like, okay. Wow. <laughs> At that point, I was like, you know what? I don't know. I just don't. <laughs> so... You know, I mean, it's just that that just stuck with me for years and years and years. And just probably in the last two to three years, I finally learned to get past the visual. Oh, and, and you said you've been a fan yeah. since. Hey, hey. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> but, you know, I just I think one day I was just sitting around and I just kind of got bored with my with my catalog a little bit. And I was like, I want I want to do something new. I want to hear something new. And. I was just thinking about how much, you know, I've been told, oh, you got to listen to Prince. It's the music. It's this, it's that. And I'm just like, you know what? Let me turn off my blinders to this visual and listen. And so I started, you know, with um, Sign of the Times, actually. That's amazing how Sign of the Times is the first album that's like catching people. Yeah. And and just just like Brandon, Ballad of Dorothy Parker is that's it. That's wow. it. Yeah. That is it. So it's it's interesting because I swear I was it was just strange. Like he was just like he was I wasn't ready for him. You know, <laughs> well, that, that, that says something. He says it. Y'all ain't ready. <laughs> it's interesting. And I, I, I'm going to ask you guys, you mentioned another big piece of Prince. You know, yes, it's all about the music. But the other side about Prince is a very visual artists mm-hmm. you know that's the yeah. other big thing you know yeah that is a big mm-hmm. thing well yeah. i'm curious uh and and for crystal in a certain way that mm-hmm. particular image of the get off performance sort mm-hmm. of you know uh got in the way of seeing the other side which mm-hmm. I, I hey and i i'm not mad at that because if that was the first <laughs> thing i seen brothers ass <laughs> yeah, out, right? i wouldn't know what yeah, the hell's like, going uh, on uh, either so, yeah, i don't know about that <laughs> <laughs> but I'm curious for for, for uh, Brandon and uh, Jesse, and you meant actually you kind of did mention it, Brandon. You said you saw uh, the computer blue performance from Purple Rain. Yes. I'm curious, uh, Jesse. What, do you remember like when you saw Prince? I don't know what what Prince, what you know style he was at that particular time. Was there did this stand out to you like? Um, it look? did. Yeah, like I saw Love Sexy. I saw the Love Sexy okay. makeup thing. With the um, you know, the jacket, and he had all the makeup on his face, and the police hat. Oh yes. And I was like, "What in the world? What is he doing?" Like, I couldn't understand it. <laughs> but someone told me it was the same guy from the One Night Alone video. Because I thought, I don't know, I, I, I was really, I didn't believe it was the same person because the changes just right. shocked me. It really shocked me. I was like, "Wow, he really looks different. He don't even look like the same person." Mm-hmm. And so. That that's what in in a way inspired me because it felt like he was a real storyteller because okay. every concept and every album was different mm-hmm. and I I really liked that it actually did good for me because I was on the opposite of you I didn't get it but I, for me it was like uh, wow what's the next one gonna be you know because okay. right. it <laughs> it was just intriguing but it, it my my dad and my mom they were like why does he have to wear heels why does he you know they could <laughs> yeah. yeah, they, they were saying that back when back in the days too mm-hmm. uh, okay uh, yeah <laughs> um so all right um I wanted to get into concerts and, and visual things um so getting into the music is one thing mm-hmm. uh I, obviously guys all about the music on one hand but you know there's many facets of prince it's also all about that stage it's mm-hmm. all about that performance uh and, and the experience um when was the first time and maybe it was purple rain for you brandon but when was the first time you got to see a prince performance well um i remember and, and I'm, let me just say whether you were okay. there physically or it was on video Okay. Oh, okay. You know. um, well, I remember the rave into the the year two thousand pay per view special. Um, my mom 
pay like I don't know I, I can't remember what how much it was but I remember the pay-per-view performance and I remember staying up past like 11 o'clock to just to see that performance wow. and it was like whoa like I had never seen a full Prince concert in my life but that was kind of like that that really set me up to experiencing him artistically the depth of his material and and everything that he was doing um showman wise so mm-hmm. that was like my my entry point to seeing prince in a full concert and all of his glory so that that really <laughs> set me up for i mean for just a whole many years until now so okay i was like i was intrigued I- i'm curious uh when was your first concert experience where you saw it live or have you seen him live I have never seen him live. Oh, okay. You've never, never seen Chris live, Brandon? No way. No, sir. We have to, we have to correct that. that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I have gone physical. And I swear I'm going to do some work. Yeah. <laughs> no. uh, Crystal, uh, what was what was the first thing you saw? Well, I guess it was the, we well, you know, it was yeah. the Get Off performance. Yeah, wow, get, what get a, off what a was, performance. Was a <laughs> <laughs> but he, he rocked that, but, you know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> Being a little, being younger, I was like, I do not want to see this man's. Ugh. I just was not. I was not ready at all. I was like, I none of us were ready. <laughs> uh, when was the first concert? If you've ever seen him live before? Mm, let me see. It was probably was Purple Rain count. Well, no, I mean, when was the first? Con- well. Uh, I want to know when was first, have you seen him in person, like live? No, no, oh, and okay. I want to. Okay. I want to. <gasps> yeah, I would. no okay. way. <laughs> <laughs> well, Michael, have you seen? I know you've seen uh, him, Michael. Yeah, of course, oh, many yeah. other times. Um, <laughs> well, you were gonna say purple, pur- purple rain. Have you watched a concert on video? Aside, yeah, have you ever seen a concert, a video concert? Mm, besides purple rain, you know what? You had posted a link. Um, me on black. It was it was during like the Dirty Mime era or something. Okay. It, like, I I watched that and it was pretty good. I right. like that a lot. Okay. So we we gonna we have to we gonna have to fix that too. Yeah. To now, Jess, let me, let me let me let me let me dial it back just a second. Now, Jesse, <laughs> you currently live in Minnesota. Yeah, I live in Minneapolis now. You live in Minneapolis so. now, and you are you are you seem to be at the park every other weekend. Pay the park. Yeah, so anytime time they open it. <laughs> I, I know you've seen him many times, but I want to go back to what was the first concert that you, or performance uh, that you went to a Prince? Well, Prince was in Austin, and that was in 2013. That was the first show, that's South by Southwest. Uh, and that came through miraculous circumstances, obviously, because I knew about the show earlier, but I just didn't have $700 to get in. <laughs> And I was like, man, I love to see you, Prince, but I can't break $700, you know. And then it was a surprise through Dr. Funkenberry's spreecast with Seth. And the MPG surprised me with a ticket to go. And they picked me up from my house and the limousine and everything. It was just really nice, you know, and put me in a hotel. And then I was the uh, I was on the VIP. So I got a chance to talk to the band and talk to him afterwards. And but the show was it was, you know, that was my first time seeing a Prince show. And it was definitely more than I expected it, you know, even without the guitar, because he didn't play the guitar once. Interesting. But it was still one of those shows that I'll never forget. It was like a real big party and his voice was just crisp. It, it was really cool. So it was wow. one of my top moments. Yeah. Wow. What What was the if you can talk about it, what was the experience like to uh, get to meet him? Yeah. That was even more surreal because obviously, you know, I just said just. 2010 is when I started the whole thing, you know. That's Prince so, now. He's like, yeah, no. <laughs> Tell my business, boy. <laughs> no. uh, meeting him, actually talking to him, and actually getting a chance to, you know, just introduce myself was really cool. He's, he, I mean, just to know he knew about me. Right. Now, and this is off of the strength of strength of uh, you were on. Uh, the Spreecast, shout out to uh, Funk and Barry. You were on that show. Had you been doing the videos at that point? Yeah, I, I've been doing the videos. I've been doing the videos for like, I would say since 2010. Okay. That's when I really started the videos. Okay. Yeah, about Prince. All right, man. So, yeah. Okay, so that was the first show. 
um, just to put mine in there, my first show was uh, the Purple, Pur- Purple Rain tour. It came to uh, Tacoma, Washington, which is sort of outside of Seattle. And that was a head bust. Uh, they had sold out, but they sold tickets, excuse me, behind the stage, like an elevated sort of thing mm-hmm. that was behind the stage. So, you know, yeah, he's performing the other direction, <laughs> but right. he would walk up on a riser and sort of come around sometimes to where we were at. Uh, but even though I was in the back part, that music and just seeing it live, you know, I had just seen the movie and then to see it live, I was just wow. like blown away. Like I was like, it was the first time I ever went to something where they were like jamming and mm-hmm. it was just so mm-hmm. infectious. I was like, this yeah. is unbelievable. And I, <laughs> I was blown away and uh, the Sheila E had opened and I was just, it's like, good Lord. And I was oh, wow. done. I was done after that. I was like, <laughs> that was the thing that changed me. But um, so that's interesting to hear uh, about that your first times uh, i want to go to, to jesse a little bit so jesse you've uh how many times have you seen prince live at this point? Can, <laughs> there came a yeah ooh. okay south by southwest there was the uh october surprise at paisley park that was the second time and then ooh, if i was to estimate because i've seen them here and there you know through the paisley park adventures which i sometimes even forget as a show sometimes mm-hmm. but uh I would say a give or take good 10 times. Wow. Now, have you, I think one of the ones I, things I saw you talk about, was there an opportunity where um, you and maybe some other people got to go in the studio there at Paisley Park and hear yeah. stuff? Um, yeah. He uh, had a listening party for the albums. Actually, last year when I went to Paisley Park, he, that was a trip that he flew me out there to see and that was the first time I actually got a chance to, like, explore a bit of Paisley that I didn't see before. That was the time I listened. I listened to the uh, Plexum Electrum and Artificial Age album. Okay. And that was the Studio A and Studio C. And there was another studio I went into. I can't think of the name, but yeah, the same studio where he did the Plexum Electrum video. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. He had that stage set up where it was just all uh, the music playing. Man, we so yeah, we got we gotta jump into this a little mm-hmm. bit. So <laughs> <laughs> let me first off say that is so dope of, you know, an artist, uh a prince of the caliber that he's at, legendary, OG, whatever. Yeah. That he would be like, Yo, I see what you're doing, sir, young sir. <laughs> and and you know, let me extend come come and see, come to Mecca, come to the Jedi Council come to Paisley Park. <laughs> <laughs> come to share. the headquarters. Yeah, yeah it was this definitely. Thing. Yeah, he he's. I, I I can't thank him enough for those opportunities. Seeing Paisley Park and listening to, just being in his presence because that that whole day was really weird because it was it happened so fast. It was like okay, you're leaving in two. I was I left in two hours from the moment I got the ticket. Wow. So. You know, having to tell my mom and everything, hey, I got to go to the airport. I'll see you when I get back. You know, she's like, what? You know, and right, so. Right. That's a real that's a real boss move, too. Like, for instance, yeah, yeah we got to take a guy. Boom, boom. Yeah, go. she couldn't believe me. I can't believe I'm bringing my son to see Prince. What, what, you know, what else? So, well, and when I get there, I finally, you know, the first thing I do is I meet the band. They put me in a studio, and that's when I listen to all of the uh, the music. So I, I hear Plexum Electrum for the first time. And afterwards, they escort me to a room where I talk to Prince, but I'm talking to him on the speakerphone. He's not even actually in the room. It's just me, the band. And he's like, so what did you think of the album? And he's giving me his spill about the uh, industry and where the industry should go and where he's planning on going with the music. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought that was it because he was like, all right, well, you know, thanks. So I was like, oh, OK, cool. I got a chance to talk to Prince, but not actually in person. But still, it was right, cool. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then. I left that room for a bit and then um, I heard some music like they put me back in the, the main entrance of Paisley and I heard some music and I saw Kirk. I'm like, it seemed like they still talking. He was like, man, you can go anywhere you want to go. I ain't going to even say nothing. So <laughs> I went So I went where the music was and there was Prince jamming with uh, Leanne LaHavis and Trevor and Josh and Hannah. At the other girl was there. He sees me, he, you know, he, he gives me a handshake and that's when I hear Artificial Age for the first time. So wow. he plays... The gold standard and full. He's like, like, come here, sit on this chair. I couldn't even sit down on the chair because 
as mo- the moment he played the gold standard, I just start dancing and he's just <laughs> laughing. And uh, it was it was really a cool time, you know, just to be able to obviously be in his presence among the joy and the nervousness and you know, wow. <laughs> it was that's crazy. That's wow. the that, that's like I, I got to go into my white guy voice. That's awesome, man. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> now nah, that's that's just really dope, man. I, I'm I'm just like real happy for you. It's, it's good to hear stuff like that, man. Because sometimes you, you don't think of people as being like real and mm-hmm. you know human and stuff. And like, yeah, yeah. That, that's yeah, just, you know, sharing yeah, that exactly. type of experience with people is what you're supposed to do. So that's dope, man. I, ah, I'm so proud. I'm proud of you. Proud of him. Just to, to hear that. So, yeah. Um, all right. So yeah. Uh, what else I wanted to? to um, I wanted to ask you guys about the albums. Uh, it's a very interesting start. Albums. A sign of times. 2010 mm-hmm. I, I love that 2010 it's like the, <laughs> the thing that just got you in that's just so dope to me um what do you guys think of you know a lot of times you hear conversation and we've had this conversation on this this show many times about prince's new music versus mm-hmm. you know the older works or uh works that came before um mm-hmm. do you think it's well it's not fair but do you when you listen to the music uh, do you think that it's different at all, or you, what is your thoughts about his catalog of music? Uh, I don't know, it's sort of a broad question, but uh, you know, Jesse, for yourself, you know, 2010. What was the album that you? Well, I think you said what you went back to, but mm-hmm. what do you lean toward? Is there anything that you like? You know, I I play this all the time. This I, is my style. Oh, okay. Well, you know, Prince does a lot of genres, and I tend to enjoy him most when he does jazz i tend to enjoy his improvisation okay. and his funk sensibility more so not i don't want to say more so but i listen to it more like love sexy the rainbow children one night alone come something experimental even something kind of edgy mm-hmm. that's the kind of prince i really i i think that's the kind of stuff i like like i love it when he he tends to do things that you like when you listen to come for the first time like what 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 came, what made you make a song 11 minutes and <laughs> take it all of those different directions so i like it when he can expand do edgy not so more not saying pop is bad cuz i love the pop stuff mm-hmm. too but i like it when he tends to bend him, himself and become a bit more vulnerable so uh right. that's my favorite uh crystal what, what do you uh um you know i kind of lean i course sign of the times but i i actually really love the parade album because mm. it's it's so like just mm. in terms of where uh where his music was kind of before and then this just you know i mean or even around the world in the day too mm-hmm. so around the world in the day was like just those that are just so a departure from you know the funk which you know i love funky prints too but mm-hmm. just those those albums like especially parade um and the fact that, you know, just the funny thing that, you know, Kiss is on there. It's, Kiss sounds nothing like the other <laughs> stuff that's right, on there. Right, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, I just, I I really enjoyed that. And, you know, and uh, Jesse, you were talking about um, the song Come. I I love that song. I know that sounds strange, <laughs> but I do yeah, love that song. I love right. that song. It's it's so, mm-hmm. like, just the, the horns. Yes. Just the horns the themselves. Horns, the bass. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah that, I know, I know. The, the part in so. Come, where they... The, the horns sort of come toward uh, toward the end of the song. Yes, that's just like I have to just keep that part going. Like, oh, yes. God, oh and his <laughs> vocals. You hear all of these yeah. different princes mm-hmm. coming in one time at different times. You know, and it's, yeah, <laughs> it's just it's too good. It's too good. good. All right, uh, Brandon. Um, for me, just like Jesse and Crystal, I lean toward uh, Prince's adventurous side. So I. I'm more of a 80s and 90s guy. I like to listen to um, a lot of those mix of albums. Uh, the one I've really been listening to a lot is uh, Parade. Mm-hmm. I find myself listening to uh, Parade and Love Sexy, really, because yeah. those are the mm-hmm. two in particular where I felt like he was really going for unconventional territory. Like he was, yeah. He was just throwing stuff out there that just was not... You know, no one else was doing at that point, I can imagine. So it was kind of like, mm-hmm. whoa, what is what is this? 
um, especially with love sexy, you mm-hmm. know, mixing yeah. the secular with the spiritual, but it's all together unique. So that was that's really where I go for. Um, as far as his '90s stuff, I like I like new uh, new power soul. I'm one of I those love people. New power <laughs> that I, I'm so like, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I yeah, I I listened to that <laughs> probably out of all of his albums. I probably listened to that one the most. That's one of them I listened to the most. Wait, I'm so glad you said that, uh, man. So yeah, maybe, we're gonna have that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and that's one thing I just want to bring up real quickly. Like a lot of people from maybe Michael's generation. They would go in on Prince for a lot of his <laughs> later material, like yeah. some some of the stuff he did, like in the late nineties to now. And it's mm-hmm. like I, but I love some, I love a lot of that stuff. That's the really the stuff that I really grew Me out too. of. There was a time when I used to listen to Raven to the Joy Fantastic. That was like one of the albums that I had on in rotation mm-hmm. as a child. So that was like that was crazy. So yeah, that's really where I, I, I get. Prince. That, that's wow. interesting that you say that. It's it's almost like I can see there's like three generations based off of mm. what you said. Uh, there's the, you know, uh, the first order of fans. The, uh, <laughs> like my, my cousin who got me into Prince, I always say she was heavy into, um, you know, when Dirty Mind came out and Controversy 1999. I didn't even really know who he was at that time. But when mm-hmm. I would visit her uh, in Houston, you, you, it was unescapable that that music was just playing at all the parties and she was all enamored with it, which she should should be. I mean, it was killer mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. And then Purple Rain comes out and she was still into that. Obviously, this was, you know, it was sort of the accumulation of this guy I've been rooting for the last four or five years. Now he becomes a superstar. Mm-hmm. And yeah, everyone understands what I'm talking about. And then he drops around the world in a day. Yeah. And, and so this was the changing of the guard. This was, you know, those of that first order was like, whoa, <laughs> what, what is this? Where's, you know, where's that funk Minneapolis, you know, sort of thing. Yeah, the cloud just, suit on now. Yeah, the, the yeah. music totally changes. But for me, yeah. that's one of the points where I'm like, whoa, you know, yeah. my head mm-hmm. is blown open. Like I'm on board, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I'm all into that. And she sort of falls back and some of those you know there's a lot of people that had something to say and sort of went into other things and I would see the same sort of thing now it's like so and what you said uh, you take an album like New Power Soul and you know 3121 blah 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 and some of the people from my second the second generation part is kind of like whoa yeah, it's kind of changing up a little bit it's not the same it's not but you know you'll come in and you're like whoa you know, I, I love this. You know, this is amazing, da, 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 which it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. So I think it's again, he has such a long uh, career still going, such a long body of work and it's generational. And I think each of these three generations come in at a certain point. And the mm-hmm. great thing about Prince is that he is able to flip the script. Mm-hmm. Right. And right. Uh, oh, pff, well, I'm doing this now. And sometimes you're ready for it. Sometimes you get ready for it later. You know, and so I think that's yeah. great that uh, collecting. Yeah, it's like boom. I mean, like I said, 2010 could be the album that gets you in, or you understand how New Power Soul is so dope that album. <laughs> uh, and it, 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 but then when you take a step back from it, like when I take a step back from certain things, I can say, you know what? Damn, there is some heat on this later album or this shit is actually really dope. I just didn't give it a chance, you know, and blah, blah, blah. I wasn't, I wasn't ready for it at the time. So that's a lot of stuff to. He's like that. In. Definitely. Where a lot of his music grow or it catches you at random. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Cause new power. So it did the same for me. It was about last year. It caught me where I was like, mm-hmm. Oh, now I see, you know, I yeah. still have certain things about it that I don't totally like freaks on this side. I still, <laughs> man, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but oh, but Lord. but I could still be more accepting because I could. He just really is a different person every album. It it really yeah. is like <laughs> so. Um, yeah. uh, let, let me ask you guys this: uh, Have you had a chance? I'm sure you have. What is the uh, protege or Prince Associated album that you are like? This is my joint. Or wow, I didn't know he did this. Um, is there any? side Ooh. project album that you just like woof. 
Can I give like a you may have a specific? Couple. Yeah, I, I have like <laughs> it's just you know what the thing with me is I'm listening more to his protege's albums than his own albums nowadays. Yeah. It's like it's weird. <laughs> like I'm listening to um the family, mm. and that album is just like heat man. It made my head spin when I first heard it. It's like this is the sound that birthed parade and um mm-hmm. madhouse is is basically a, a merger of that but he was doing it with these guys and they kind of went into their own direction and he was he i mean again it, um the time uh the times first three albums actually uh the self-titled what time is it and uh ice cream castles mm-hmm. so um a lot of that stuff and also jill jones mm. her album is oh uh, yeah yeah bananas yeah. that's like my favorite Female protege out of all of them. I'm not really a big fan of Sheila, but I oh. love Jill. I love me some Jill. It's on me. Jill, is my, Jill is my girl. Yeah, shout out to Jill Jones, man. Shout out to Jill though. She's cool. Yeah. Yes. All right, uh, Jesse. Um, I'm gonna have to say, yeah, the first album from the time, and go straight to Rio Valente. I know that was that came out later. Interesting, but. Elixir, I feel, you know, when you listen to the production standard he was using, it, I don't know, but that album sounds amazing. I listen to Elixir, that's one of my top albums, and it's not even, I mean, he's, he has one duet with her at the end, but, I mean, wow. And I love Sheila E, and I, so I would have to say uh, Romance 1600, mm. more so than The Glamorous Life, um, just because I feel like Romance 1600 gives more of his actual production, like you really hear his guitar and his He's just, it sounds more of a collaborative effort, too. Um, I have yet to listen to the Bria album. I, one day I will sit oh, myself. Oh, dude. Down. I, Man, <laughs> you know, no shade. I just, Absolutely. I just couldn't, I never, I never gave it a chance. I did, I did hear the last track that you meant, Elixir. That uh, is dope. I just haven't, it's, you down have to yet. listen to, yeah. you'll get his, I don't know, he sounds amazing. Like the production in 2009, that's if, Ooh, I, I kind of wish that NPL Sound went that same direction because I feel like with Elixir, you got Cora, you got Joshua on bass, and Prince. That's it. Mm. Mostly, they managed to, they just convey that sound so well. I'm, I'm, I'm giving it too much hype, but I, I swear, I guess you'll, I, I know you'll like it. I'll get you it later. Yeah, I'll get it. I know. <laughs> uh, Crystal. For me, it's going to be what time is it from mm. the time? The Gigolos Get Lonely 2 and The Walk. That yeah. that's that is it. Uh, I love I love those songs. <laughs> uh, what's the other song on that song that is just an absolute classic? Uh, I don't want seven seven seven. Well, I mean, yeah, th- those are like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Seven, I don't want to leave you. Yeah, yeah. Is that's like, uh, mm-hmm. that's flip up at the end. Yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you you, you mentioned it, uh, Jesse. <laughs> Jesse, come over here for a second. The next time you get in there to Prince, I want you to somehow you can finagle a question and say, sir, um, I'm just curious, like, what what was going on at the end of I don't want to leave you? Because yeah, it's like an abrupt drum change. There's got to be a 12 inch. <laughs> the of mysteries that. of. of yeah, yeah, I know. I, yeah, there's got to be a 12 inch of that somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Uh, so I just want to switch it up just a little bit. We mentioned this man's name a couple times, and uh, I think it's necessary to talk about him for a second. Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys, some of you guys mentioned you are into, not saying that you're not, but you, you were really into Michael Jackson or you were very aware of Michael Jackson first, possibly. Uh, I know for myself, uh, I was in the era of Michael Jackson madness. Uh, mm. I was a kid and Michael was huge and that was before off the wall. And that was the first thing that I was all into. My, you know, I, See, that was J- Jerry Curl, yeah. Penny Loafers, you know, beaded jacket, walking down the street, proud. <laughs> right head up <laughs> and people were like oh you got it you got it I mean that's how that's how deep Michael was at that time yeah so I'm curious like uh, talk to me about Michael Jackson in terms of uh, you know and then also I'm from the era where you just you know Cats was damn near ready to get in the blows over it was Michael Prince oh, oh you know, all, you know, all that nonsense <clears throat> What is Michael oh. Jackson? How does that 
what does that mean to you as well? Is it fair to uh, even compare or talk about these two in the same breath, in your opinion? Well, mm-hmm. not uh, to say I one is up. better than the other or anything. Like okay. That. Yeah. You know, well, when I grew where I grew up, you know, it was always that thing where, you know, it was either going to be Michael or Prince. I'm a, again, I'm a 90s baby. I was born in 91. I'm 24 now. So when I look mm-hmm. back at my experience with Michael and Prince, Michael, I was... I was a fan of both of them. I grew up with both of them, but I my intro to music was absolutely Prince and Michael Jackson. So Michael Jackson, to me, when I was growing up, he always seemed to be like a white... I, I didn't know if he was white or black. That was always a thing, because that was around the time his skin was you know, changing, and okay. I really didn't really get into Michael. Um, of course, you know, I was into the Thriller video. I was into um, the History album. Which, you know, I, you know, I got from a family friend, yeah. but my thing was it, when I got with Prince, it was like, whoa, you know, this is a whole nother thing. So I really didn't I didn't know what was the hype be- behind, um, you know, Prince and Michael Jackson, why people thought there was a big rivalry amongst them and, you know, what that was all about until maybe later on. But my whole thing with Michael, Michael always was a fixture in, in my musical experience growing up and you know i lived michael when i i first saw the making of um special behind thriller the video Mm, i was mm -hmm. like man that that had to have been a big time for Mm -hmm. Uh, everybody in pop history Mm -hmm. and and the world i mean just looking at him just looking at them you know um and john landis you know, yeah. put that whole thing together. That was like, whoa. And then actually listening to the music, I didn't actually get into his three, well, into his adult <clears throat> discography until maybe 2001. And that was mm-hmm. around the time uh, Invincible came out. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, I looked at everything. I had, you know, been with Michael, you know, he was going through the trial and everything. And so all that stuff. And then, you know, of course, when he died, I was like, whoa, you know, this man was more than what I thought he was. You know, he had a whole discography with his brothers and Mm -hmm. everything. So, you know, Michael, you know, he's just, he's immortal. And he's just as immortal to Prince. And I don't, I don't get why there's that big rivalry. I I never got it, but they, they both did their own respective works. And that's why they're legends. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jesse, I I know you are Michael. Uh, Hell yeah. Into Michael. I'm Michael all day. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, look, I love, I've never, I never understood the divide either because it started off with Michael for me. uh, I just got into, I I started to look at Michael more than just this one dimensional singer. And I started to see just his heart and what he was for, Mm, you know? So, I mean, I've always been with his music, but just thinking of how he extended his music and what he did with his charity work and just, his message of love and how he embedded that in his sound and his consciousness politically too, you know, that, that shocked me because a lot of people weren't talking about the things he was talking about. Um, and so, um, but I, both of them are, are equally, they have their own crowd, you know, and I would say, but I think, I think the reason why a lot of people stuck with Michael first is because he's been around longer. He's been around since he was five, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. And so seeing him from the Jackson five, seeing his evolution and then the things that he went through, uh, made it, I think challenging for some people. They didn't really know how to define him, but listening to his music, his production his I think he's, you know, him and Prince are two of my favorites. I don't ever look at them as competing. They've always had their own message and whenever, you know, they want to give it out. So, all right. Uh, Crystal, uh, sort of same question, but I want to add this to it uh, mm-hmm. as well. <clears throat> and I think somebody mentioned it. Uh, and I think of Michael Jackson, when I think of Prince, I think of the soul. Uh, and I'm not talking about soul music. I'm talking mm-hmm. about the message. I'm talking about that feeling that you get. And whether that's, you know, from the um, emotion of the voice or the lyrics um, you know, love sexy is a great thing for that. Like, there's mm-hmm. uh, a message and there's a feeling. It, this is my interpretation: the feeling of warmth and you mm-hmm. know, re- rebirth and things of that nature. And you get that from Michael too. Like, 
his voice and the tone yeah. and what he's talking about it's beyond just being pop records or right, funk right. records so i wonder if you could speak about uh what do you feel do you feel any of these things uh from prince or michael jackson uh do you like the message do you kind of get sort of what do you get from what they're talking about or what they've presented or what you've heard so far it's a very very good question um well, being that I grew up more so with Michael and I'm just really getting into Prince, mm-hmm. like I actually can really feel kind of both what they're saying. It just took me a longer time to hear Prince. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's not that one is better than the other or, you know, this one did this and did that. But I just um, both both of them resonate with me, actually. Um, the emotion that they do, um, you know, bring to their music. I, I hear it in both artists. Um, like I said, it just took me a little bit longer to really appreciate and listen Mm -hmm. to Prince and that's not taking Mm -hmm. anything away from Prince at all. Mm -hmm. So it's just, I mean, I feel what they're both saying. I just was with Michael a little bit longer. Right. That's the only difference. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Jesse, I, I know you can really speak to this as well. I've seen your videos and I've read some of your work. Like, you're, you know, I, call, I consider you like a poet, man. I don't know if you, you do, but I do. But <laughs> wow. What do you uh, what do you feel uh, from Prince Michael or whatever? Just like in your own words, like, what do you feel from that stuff, man? I just feel complete immersion. Like, I think both of them have the power to convey their emotions in such unique ways. You know, Prince often used, you know, sound to convey, you know, he, he could play anything and everything. And it's not even his ability to play, but just his ability to arrange. I think a lot of people forget or don't really give credit to his arrangement. ideal. you know, like he, he's one of the best arrangers I've ever heard, how he can arrange a song right in time for the climax of the guitar solo or whatever it is. And that's always kind of stuck out to me the most with him. And with Michael, Michael just had magic. If I could define magic, it would be Michael. He, mm-hmm. he knew how to make it for a child and for an adult. It was never this absence. Like anyone can listen to Michael and feel that that bridge or get to the bridge to where it's like you feel good, but you also feel like there's a consciousness involved. It's not just technique. It's it's soul, you know. And so. Mm-hmm with rhythm and all of that. So both of them, I feel, can just express, they they, are, they know how to express themselves in a way that it, it, hits, your, it hits your heart. It's not just yeah. you listen to it on the ear. It's just like, whoa, it, it's something deeper to it. Yeah. Yeah, there's, uh, you know, I think of Michael sometimes, like sometimes you can just look at Michael Jackson's movements. Yeah. And you get that, yeah. you can see like that feeling. He really knows how mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. physically show you some. I mean, obviously, you can do all this, but a lot of time you can look at him and just like, oh, okay, I get that. And I like what you said about Prince. Prince is like, I was listening to um, Small Club. Man, we're we about to do an uh, expert lover here in the a crystal ball here <laughs> with the, <laughs> with the siren. sirens. <laughs> <laughs> Bombs explode. Was I say? Oh, so I was listening to. I'm gonna. We're gonna go on restrictive territory here. Sorry, Mr. Nelson. Uh, small club for I was listening to. Oh snap! Yeah, I, I, was, I was listening to to one of the songs Ooh. off of that last night. <laughs> and what I love this. In a, I don't need to be reminded, but it just remind me. Like, God damn, I. This is why I love this man because. I was listening to Steel Stand All Time. Oh, and there's parts in there where just harmonically when he's uh, singing and he yeah. does like there's a mm-hmm. during that time, it was a certain way that he would play his solos like on the guitar. And oh. it just would make me feel a certain way. You know, the other song that really does that on that is um, the cover he did. Just my imagination. Yeah. Yeah. That solo on there is just no. everything that I love about it's, Prince. I love about Prince, yeah. exactly. <laughs> it's like it's everything. I, uh, I feel his heart just uh, just gets you, and it's a comforting see, sort of thing. Ooh, when he can engage, see when Prince does it. That's the thing that I saw a lot. Like seeing him live in Brandon, and I hope you all 
you get the chance to see him live because yeah. when he plays live, he really knows how to do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I, my last show was at Paisley Park and he performed Dreamer and that was actually released on SoundCloud. So you guys get a chance to, you know, check that out. Mm-hmm. But he also did uh, Crimson and Clover, which was not on it. But when he went into the solo, it was like, he man, I don't know how he does it because it feels like it takes a lot out of him in a sense because mm-hmm. his facial expressions, it, 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 he manages to really convey sound, especially through his guitar and such unique. I don't know. He's the only guitar player I feel when I listen to him, really listen to his guitar solos. Like, My Imagination is a great example. It feels like it's a story almost, you know, mm-hmm. and it is it's really phenomenal. It's like... Um... I almost <clears throat> sometimes I feel like it's his way of singing or something. It's it's so some it's painful when I say it's painful. <clears throat> I'm not meaning that it sounds painful. I mean like I don't know, and this could be just for me, but I feel like he's it pulls certain emotional things out of me that mm-hmm. were sometimes can be painful, but it makes it feel like it's okay. Like it's like ah. I, get it and some of the it sounds like he's screaming he mm-hmm. he can yeah. scream very well and make those sounds but some of his playing sort of conveys that and i'm just like yeah. god damn you know this is <laughs> just very yeah. interesting man it's yeah. just that's what, like what gets you. Of that, yeah yeah so yeah you have you guys you guys have to see him live Okay. At least I'm one gonna, time in your life. I'm gonna put that on oh. top of my must do list before <laughs> yeah. he passes. Before he, God forbid, I know. He passes, you have I to. You have to do it. You have to do okay. it. You have to. It's it's one of those things. It's it's much different listening to him on a, when I saw him, you know. And then my experience was kind of jaded. I felt because I'm like, man, why you didn't even play the guitar? And I, I told him that. <laughs> <laughs> I told him. I was like, Prince, right, why didn't right. you play the guitar? And he was like. Well, the music was on point, so I didn't need to. Hilarious. Which he had a point. <laughs> it was like, but, <laughs> but the second time he made up because after the show, a lot of people don't know this, but after the main show I went to at Paisley Park, which was cool because he performed, but he didn't play the guitar either. He didn't play the guitar to Purple Rain. I was like, why Why is he not? I felt like I kind of took it personally. <laughs> I was like, he can play the guitar because he know how much I like him playing the guitar. But then after the show, there was a little private party there. It was just 50, us, 50 of us invited into the Plectrum Electrum room. Mm. And as, as soon as I walk in, you know, I'm, this feels like a dream because he has his gold outfit on. His afro is all puffed out. And he sees me and he points at me and he says, I have my guitar just for you. Oh, that's and, awesome. Wow. Oh, wow. That's a big moment. Yeah. yeah wow. Huge moment. And the first song he did, was uh, Plectrum Electrum. No, that was the last song. The first song they did was actually uh, Stratus. Mm -hmm. And he went into Stratus and, you know, but when he got into, yeah. But when he, the second, in the middle, he was like, so what do you guys want to hear? So it was just complete silent. You know, no one said nothing. And then (laughs) it was like Plectrum Electrum. And he was like, okay, cool. And then boom, 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 you know, straight (laughs) into it. It was like, we all were like, you know, that was, so yeah, he made up for it, but. You guys got to see him up. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, it's 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 a must. Um, oh, we're gonna wrap things up. But speaking of, so you got to see him live. Um, I'm curious, is there another uh, artist aside from Michael Jackson, maybe somebody current or whatever, that you guys are really into that you think uh, can be or is like something you're really into and can be something like hey, I got to go see this or this is the next this guy is going to have his own sort of thing or a woman. Uh, what's the other artist that you're into, uh, Crystal, that you just, think? um, well, honestly, my, my first, first love was Stevie wonder. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and my, I'm mad because my dad, you know, he lives, he lives across the country now, but he actually went to go see him recently. And all he could do was think of me mm-hmm. at the show. <laughs> Cause he knows how much I, I love Stevie wonder and I, if he ever can make it out here or wherever's close by, I, I need to go see him. He, he yeah. means, he means a lot to me for sure. Nice. Nice. I need to see Stevie wonder too. I've never yeah. Seen him yeah. I have to see him live too. I really want to see. Stevie I'm just, live. I'm a, I'm a sucker for, for keys, piano, keyboard. I just, I have to, I have to. Yeah. You have to. <laughs> All right. Uh, how about you, Brandon? Um, for me, just like Crystal, uh, Stevie is, I mean, I 
after Prince and Michael, there was Stevie. Um, mm-hmm. So for mm-hmm. me, I remember listening to the original Musiquarium, and I was like, "Whoa!" Mm-hmm. You know, he he's a he's another one of one of our icons that I just must see. Um, as far as the person who is now dead or you know had passed, I wish that I would have um, been around to see Marvin Gaye. Oh, that's yeah, another one because oh. Marvin just has something that. Uh, I think Mike, you just touched on it. He had something that, you know, when he sang, it's like he could tap into your emotion. Yes. So I would have, I would have loved to be around to experience that, you know, that type of thing, and and actually get to see him visually. So that that's two of my favorites. I I can't. Yeah, say I wish it. I had to see well, Marvin. Too. I know, I love Marvin. Yeah, love Marvin. Oh. Yeah, the story is crazy. I wish I saw both of them. And yeah. if- yeah, I look at Marvin the same way I'm, I look at Prince in some ways. Yeah, that's yeah, interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Jesse, any anybody else? For you? I mean, you know, they said Stevie, and that's like, yeah, I really got to see Stevie. I got a chance to see recently, and Erica Badu. I would love oh, to see. Oh yeah, her. Mm-hmm. yeah, yes. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I saw her once. Uh, that was yeah. She's she's the shit, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? Uh, to, uh, He's dope. The other person to me that I just I put all my hopes and like and I've said this many times I I feel like uh, and he's a student of Prince uh, the disciple I should say uh, it would be D'Angelo mm-hmm. uh, Mr. Archie yeah. oh, I knew you were going to say D'Angelo yeah. I knew you were going to say I hear so much about the show it's it's really good yeah, yeah I, I hear about it too I he was just here last week I didn't get to go I was ah, pissed about he's going to be here at first yeah. half I saw I that no. And yeah. I, uh, I couldn't afford the tickets, but I uh, definitely, I'm gonna still yeah. try to go out and just see what happens. You know, who knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's mm-hmm. a good plan. Have you? Well, and let me ask you, all of you guys, have you ever seen D'Angelo live before? I've never seen D'Angelo live. Oh, no, I seen. haven't. No, nope. I'm, I'm ashamed. <laughs> no, I, mean, hey, that, um, I saw him. Actually, I've seen him twice. So I'm gonna act like I have never seen him before. Mm-hmm. But it was such a long time ago. Right? <laughs> it was like, oh well, yeah, uh, but. <laughs> The the first time I saw him uh, live, the the Brown Sugar uh, mm-hmm. tour, mm-hmm. and he wasn't really that big at the time. You know, the album had just sort of came out, and he played here in Seattle, actually the same place he just played at. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I had the album, but I wasn't really really playing it heavy at all. You know, I, I think I was just maybe playing Brown Sugar and possibly Lady a little bit because I just thought it sounded kind of cool. Yeah. And I went and saw that show, and he, you know, he's not the D'Angelo he is today where he's all mm-hmm. standing up right. and going crazy. He just literally sat at that piano, and I could tell he was very nervous. But mm-hmm. the music and the, the singing, I, I was like, I was, I st- stood there watching. I was like, this month, excuse me, <laughs> this dude <laughs> is giving me what I feel at a few of the Prince concerts I went to and some of the, Prince stuff, the concerts I listened to, I was like, this is ridiculous. I'm like, I need to go back and listen to this album because Mm -hmm. this dude is, I understand exactly what he's doing. I was listening to the harmonies and this is when he had Andy Stone with him. Yeah. 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 Blown away. And then I really went back to listen to that record and I really, I paid attention. I was like, okay, I really see what he's doing with his vocals and (laughs) I get it, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, Years later, he does the voodoo, uh, and then you know you see that show, and you can you know a student will see oh okay that's that's the parade show you oh know, yeah. You, yeah you put it oh, together yeah. oh, I'm like, yeah. but he's but I'm like but, but he's doing it for today and with the hip hop sensibilities and you know the J D mm-hmm. stuff yeah, from, and, you right. know I'm like mm-hmm. okay he's taking it to the next level, and then you know you have the, the you know Black Messiah and all that, and I'm like. It's a shame to me because the music industry is totally different mm-hmm. and where I think probably 14 years ago or whatever, he would be the end all or be all and there'd be, the, you know, no question. Yeah. There's more right. opportunities for that thing to be bigger than it is. But I'm just like, I hope that things like him and other artists can continue to survive and do it because there has to be uh, that music that has that emotional soulful mm-hmm. and I love that he's 
picked the guitar and is expanding it out, you know, mm-hmm. not just staying in one lane. Because we, I think he's just carrying on this tradition of not only the Princes, but of course the Marvins and the Slys mm-hmm. and, and, and all of that stuff. And I just think that he he can be like, like that. And I, and I like the fact that, you know, he's got Jesse up there, obviously. Mm-hmm. He's pulling from, you know, Damn it! Let me go get the mm-hmm. people that <laughs> were a part of, you know. And that's what I mean. That, that's a beautiful thing because one is giving these people jobs, is keeping right. you know these right. people mm-hmm. in the game, and but then he's learning. Uh, so I just think that I feel like he's the next. He's already what he so, is, but I just yeah. hope that more of that type of stuff right has a lane right. for it. You know, at least yeah. has a lane. Uh, and the same with Prince, like the new album. Uh, I'm glad that he is continuing to just put records out. You know, I'm not mm-hmm. even tripping on how much they sell and title and all that. But the fact that he still has the avenue to release music, mm-hmm. and I know I want to hear it. I know, you mm-hmm. know uh, there's people that want to hear it, and I just want him to stay active, not only for you know live, but hitting that studio, man, and continuing to yeah, you know, exactly. put the music down. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, just uh, uh, I love that he's still going. It's uh, amazing to me that after all these years, it's still reaching new people, and that's why I wanted to do the show. It's still reaching different generations, and there's such a breadth of work that no matter when you jump on, when you're ready, you can be like, "Okay, let me go." Oh, he did. <laughs> this was him. You know, like, like you said, I didn't yeah. even know that was the same dude. Like, ah. Oh. Damn. Yeah, that's a good thing. He's always something out there on his. Damn. I mean, he got something for everybody. Even if you mm-hmm. don't like the stuff that he's doing now, the benefit is that you can go, you can go in the eighties, you can go in the nineties, yeah. you can go the stuff he played live, the stuff he didn't release, the stuff he, you know, mm-hmm. it's so many, so many avenues with Prince, and that's what guarantees him for me. Uh, and the thing is, okay. he's very eclectic, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's it hits everyone on many chords you yeah. know just musically and spiritually and and otherwise so it's great right very true yep. last question last thing is uh because i said you know the other part about prince at least in my opinion is is the visual um uh, you know he's not just throwing on anything to wear it obviously takes time to mm-hmm. put that stuff together and change it up uh so i wanted to ask you about the videos um have you guys had a opportunity to see uh you know some of the older music videos or newer ones but um have you guys seen like the music and i ask that because i know it's a little hard to see them nowadays yeah Mm -hmm. but have you had a chance to see any of the videos and did any of them stand out that you're like i love that video (laughs) (laughs) let me just say this real quick and prince no he was not like Michael with his videos. We know Absolutely. that. Not, I mean, he was, he was literally just jamming. So there's no video. The only video, there's three videos that stuck out to me the most that I like, okay. which is I Wish You Heaven, hmm. oh, Dinner yeah. with Dolores. I don't know why, but I love Dinner with Dolores. And then the other last one would have to be You Make My Sunshine. Everything else, though, has always been, uh, didn't really get it, you know, like Alphabet Street or... I guess when two are in love is a great video, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it for me with video. All right. uh, Brandon. Um, for me, like Jesse, you know, I, but I, I like, I actually like most of his videos. Um, the video that I really, uh, took a chance to kind of go back into was off of the, I think it was the Diamonds and Pearls video collection. It was, um, yeah. uh, Gangsta Glam. Yes. Oh, God. I'm like, <laughs> you like that man, King, huh? Not, no, no, no. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> I, I'm like, what is this shit? I, I never, I never saw it before. Mm. I was like, what? He was on some other stuff. Okay, this was around, officially think, released. Okay. Yes, this was. This I, I, I was bought it the like, day it came out. Tower Records. That, that was hot. I was like, <laughs> what is this? What I mean? So he has like, oh, I, I can't even pick a favorite. I think for me, the one that I love the most it would have to be "Money Don't Matter Tonight." I know oh, that's an interesting shit. pick. It's the one with, uh, yeah, I know Shy Town. Um, oh. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. My baby, okay. my baby. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. 
Okay. Um, the reason why I like that video the most is because it has the social commentary that he really wasn't hitting that much. And of course, Spike Lee directed um, a couple of versions of that video. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The one with the uh, black and white and uh, the one with him that's actually favorite. performing. Mm -hmm. um, but that's really the one that I've been watching. I was like, wow, you know, the visual and the, the whole montage of uh, news clips and, you know, showing the homeless and money mm -hmm. and people in unfortunate situations. So that's the one I've really been watching. But yeah, I've I saw Gangsta Glam and all that other stuff uh, <laughs> that I want to, uh, that blue light uh, video. Mm -hmm. The 90s was, stuff. I'll take that back. The 90s was a good, the, the Diamonds and Pearls time and lots yeah, of some simple, those great videos. Three okay. Chains of Gold. I yeah. was like, I looked at some of those videos. I was like, wow. Yeah, <laughs> actually, <laughs> women without, okay. But I, you know, but, yeah, I I was like, wow, okay. He was he was on some midlife crisis. I think he wow. was actually suffering a midlife crisis. Time, but it was so entertaining. So, right. yeah. Uh, Krista? Yeah, I was... The one that I... Re like, there's two of them that I remember the most just because they... Um, they remind me of like stuff that, you know, like my family kind of. Like the Kiss yeah. video. Yeah. That's... My, that's, that's Yeah, that's just that... Yeah, the, the outfit, the, the dancing and... And Wendy just, yeah. I, it just, it was cool. And then to laugh, the sexy MF video cracks me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, 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 dancing, the dancing in front of them, them cars in the garage, it was just like, what? <laughs> what is going on? It was just, it was so over the top to me. And it was, it's just. It was like a hip hop video if you kind of yeah, think about it, was, it now. It's like doing hip hop shit. Yeah, right? it just, it was just for the time though. And, you know, I was, when did that come out? It was like 91. 91. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 90. 91, 92. Yeah, I was, you know, seven, eight years old. Yeah. What? <laughs> this. this. Yeah. Uh, that song, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. All right. Yeah, those. Yeah. Uh, that was a home video. Mm -hmm. Video single. Uh, I mean, they sold that. I remember, that, remember when that dropped out. That was dropped out. I was like, what is the, you know, it was, like it's head buster, it was just crazy. I was like, this is scrub the dishes and just start yeah. going. Step yeah, it was a like, different era. Crazy. Troy, was yeah. it Troy Bear? Yeah, mm -hmm. oh. yeah, mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah man, so, yeah. This, I, I, I hope they put out uh, that would be cool release to put out maybe a Blu ray, you know, I don't know, Warner Brothers or something. We'll put out all those classic videos even you know going all the way from the first album uh, well, I don't know if there's an album well, I guess I Want to Be a Lover might have been the first video and mm -hmm. I think yeah. there's two versions of that video but mm -hmm. uh, yeah starting from that all the way up to whatever Warner Brothers joint they got there's a lot of there's a, there, there, a lot of those videos again yeah you said they're not on Michael Jackson nobody was on Mike, Michael's level video yeah well yeah, yeah. but I, I thought his videos were great particularly uh I think they're perfect if you think about them in context. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because again, he would change his look so much from the previous thing. And this was, and this was a world before the internet. So there wasn't a lot of opportunities to see prints. Mm -hmm. And so every time you saw him, it was such a drastic difference. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, which is why, why Kiss always stands out to me because yeah. prior to that, we only saw him in uh, the America video, which didn't get a lot of play. And then Raspberry Beret, which mm -hmm. got a lot of play. But again, that video was such a shocker because it was like, he looks, he doesn't look like the kid, you know, from Purple Rain. That's all we knew, right? right. So you see the, that video and you're like, whoa. His, his hair, hair was hair different. different. Yeah. It's like, what is going on? And then, and then that video, and then you never saw him really. Uh, you never saw nothing else on TV <laughs> again. America didn't really play that much, so you just never saw him until the movie, you know. And then Kiss comes out, and that was such a drastic difference in look. And he was smiling, yeah. and, and, <laughs> and, and you know, and before you never saw much emotion from him uh, on screen. And so to see him jumping around, dancing, he didn't have the guitar in his hand. He, you know, didn't have a shirt on. He just, he's like, whoa, this is, <laughs> this is happy Prince. Like, I loved it. You know, I was like, whoa, this is a totally different Prince. So I remember that always kind of stood out. But uh, yeah, I loved his style in the parade era. era. Yeah. Uh, I loved it. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. And the Around the uh, World in a Day era. I love the hat that he was rocking mm-hmm. in uh, America. Oh, he was yeah. doing the whole trench coat. That was cool. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, all right. I mean, this has been an excellent, excellent show. Uh, we're going to have to have you guys back. We're going to have to do a album review. Oh, we may have to actually, yes. we may yeah. actually have to come back and do, you know, let's say this, we will. We're going to do New Power Soul. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. let's okay. do that. Let's do power. <laughs> That's my joint. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about that. So we'll definitely come back for that. Um, <laughs> what I want to do now before we get out of here, I want to let people know where they can find you guys online. Uh, starting with you, Jesse. Uh, where tell us uh, the name of the YouTube channel and where they can get to you online? Uh, so my YouTube is uh, Jester Rants, which is J E S T R A N T S. So just like Jester, and then add ants at the end of it. Um, and you can find my Twitter at Jester I seven E Y E seven. All right. And uh, yeah, uh, let me also put this out there. Uh, J- uh, Jesse, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm going to be your Jerome. So the next oh, time bro. Prince call you up, well, Prince, I need another one for my valet, uh, Michael Dean, because I, I got to get in there. But anyway, yeah, for sure. Okay, <laughs> I hold the mirror for you. <laughs> Brandon, where can they find you online? Yes, I'm I'm on Facebook uh, by my name, Brandon Owsley. I also have a YouTube channel um, where I do videos. Um, it's Brando Soul, B-R-A-N-D-O Soul, S-O-U-L, all together. I um, also have a Tumblr. Um, it's brandonowsley.tumblr.com. So you can find me on those spots. All right, all right. Crystal, where can they find you online? You can find me on Twitter, uh Name is uh, Chris Neese. It's C R Y S N E E C E. And that's where I'll be. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Let us know what you think about this show. Leave your comments, uh, questions on the Facebook page or on the site, of course. Uh, also, check us out at Podcast Juice on Twitter. And uh, podcastjuice.net is the website. Also, you can check us out on Facebook, of course. Hey, you always, uh, I'm, 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 I'm losing my, my voice and I'm tripping. Work it like a job. We will see you next time.